Hey everyone, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More. We're back with another real estate video. And today we're talking about a contractor situation that has not gone well at all. And it's actually one I was gonna kind of leave alone and not talk about until they went online and started leaving bad reviews about my business. And at that point, I kind of think that gives me permission to uh, talk about the situation and what happened. So basically it's a, a contractor we started working with a few months ago. We always start them off on some small jobs. Uh, they want to do a bigger job gave us a bid for some demo. It was an absolutely crazy bid. I mean, really crazy. We'll show you the house, what the demo was for. And then when I said, no, that's not going to work, um, it did not go well. And this contractor was not very nice about anything, very unprofessional. I tried to keep it professional and straightforward. And then I thought we were good. I thought everything was done. We're moving on. And they leave a really bad review on my business, which um, does not sit well with me. So we'll talk about that. We'll show you what happened, talk about the situation, show you the house, and how we deal with contractors a little bit too, because I know a lot of new investors, even experienced investors like myself, are constantly dealing with contractors and working with them, and how to have a good situation that works well for everybody and avoid these situations. But in the long run, we avoided much less hassle by the way we do handle things, I think, in this situation, then it could have been way, 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 way worse. And we'll talk about that as well. Now, of course, we love the likes, shares, comments, keep those coming. Love to see new subscribers and love to hear what you think about this situation. Or if you have questions, leave them below as well. I try to get to as many people as I can. And I've got nine, no, 10 books on Amazon now, including my crazy uh, house story book. And investformore.com has a ton of free articles and a free book on there as well, too. All right, let's get started and talk about how we started working with this contractor. All right, so here's one of the first jobs we gave this contractor, and um, we've been really crazy busy lately, had a lot of things go on the last six months, and Nikki, my project manager, kind of hates me a little bit for that, but <laughs> she's doing a great job. Um, part of the problem was uh, we had a, someone quit on my team, which made things really, really difficult for us, and then I bought a store, then I bought a bar, it's just been really crazy. So we haven't been to the flips as much. We haven't been overseeing them as much. And um, we're falling a little bit behind. So I know Nikki took on a lot of extra responsibilities that she doesn't normally do. So I tried to help out by hiring some new contractors. So part of this is mostly my fault. Well, most of it's all my fault. But <laughs> um, we interviewed a couple people, picked out a couple people, and we always start jobs small. So we've run into problems before with contractors, mostly me hiring them and not um, doing it correctly. But the biggest thing you run into is you start a really big job with a new contractor and things can go horribly, right? You can have um, just lots of hard feelings, lots of money lost on big jobs. So we always start with small jobs now. We have a list we give to contractors that say exactly how we work, a document. We interview them two or three times. like It's like a full job interview before we work with a contractor. And we do that because we've learned over time to take the time beforehand, before you hire someone, to make sure the right person instead of doing... A job first and then realizing they're the wrong person and wasting all kinds of time and money in that point. So we did that here, talked to this contractor a few times, things were going well, we started him on this demo job and I think we paid him a few thousand dollars for it which was more than I wanted to pay but we we're short on contractors, had so much other stuff going on and this property had tile everywhere. You can kind of see this is after the demo and that can be very difficult and tough work and so Again, we paid more than I thought, but it was ripping out the tile. Let's see if I can fast forward because you don't want to see all this kitchen here. Um, the bathroom. Let's see. There was lots of carpet. And honestly, really, I mean, maybe that's our fault for my fault for paying too much, right? To, uh, in, to begin with, you can see the bathroom was completely ripped out, gutted there. And then it had a basement as well. You can see the bathroom here, lots of tile, lots of stuff there. Um, yeah, full basement. Um, it's like a 2,000 some square foot house, which is important because we'll talk about that later. Again, carpet, some bathroom work, some stuff there. So again, looking back on it, it's kind of like, oh, maybe we did pay him too much for that demo and that started things off on the wrong foot. But it wasn't... It can't all be explained by that, because I'll show you how crazy things got. So he did this house, and then he finished up the bathroom, some other work, 
and it wasn't crazy bids. I have to look back, but it wasn't like a ton of money. Um, and then we have this property here in um, Milliken that we're working on as well, where it has an apartment above, apartment to the side. You can't really see where I'm pointing, but it's that way. It's probably the opposite on screen. <laughs> and um, we need some demo work there, done there, rehab work done here. Now, the last house that flip is almost done. We'll show that here soon. I know I've been slacking and showing all of our flips. This one will have an update here soon as well. And we're now working with the city to convert the church area to two more apartments. So we'll have updates on that as well. So lots of stuff going on. But for this one, so we'll go inside here. There's a tree that fell down. It's still there. We need to get that out. But anyway, this one's almost done. We have a little bit more work to do. Um, this is what it looked like when the tenants first moved out. We bought it with tenants in here. And it was a very interesting property. Um, this is my first time seeing it, I believe. That's why I'm being all dramatic about it. Sorry. And so we had them take out these cabinets, the flooring, the bathroom, demo all that, put back in some cabinets, um, lay down, click and lock flooring. And that really wasn't that expensive of a bid either. Again, I'm sorry. Don't work. No, thank you for letting us know. That's actually nice of them to tell us that. Um, and then they put that on there so the walls wouldn't get stained. Actually, a good idea. So he came through, did this work. It was a little slow, not crazy slow, but not bad. The prices weren't too horrible. And then um, the one thing I kept running into is we pulled this carpet out. I don't know if I showed that before. I'm not sure if I have. And there was hardwood floors under this. And I've always talked about this property having a cellar or basement I can't find. Turns out it was pretty much hardwood floors on concrete, on slab. So there were some areas where it was rotting a little bit, but most of them are okay. And he just kept insisting he wanted to tear up all of the hardwood floors and it was going to be $5,000 extra to do that. And I'm just like, no, like if it's not rotting, like there's just a few spots where it is, we'll fix those spots where we'll replace it and go from there. And um, eventually we're just like, you know, we're not going to pay $5,000 to rip out hardwood floors. So got through that. He finished that. He actually worked on the upstairs apartment too. There again, not a horrible, crazy bid. And so at this point, we said, hey, let's do another bigger property that needs a little more work and we'll get a bid from you on that. All right, so here's this house. We showed it before. Really interesting, cool house, but needs some work for sure. This might be a bigger rehab. And like I said, I like to start contractors on small rehabs first to see how they do before we go into a big, giant rehab. Because if we go into a big, giant rehab and you have problems halfway through, it can cost you so much money, so much time. It's not fun firing someone midway through, trying to figure out how much to pay them, how to end it, end the relationship in a good way is very difficult. Um, a lot of times, maybe they don't do things right. You have to go back, fix things. They start taking shortcuts. So it can be very difficult doing really big rehabs, even with good contractors, even if everybody has good intentions, knows what they're doing. If you get into one with a bad contractor or one who's inexperienced, it can just be a nightmare. So even on this one where we've worked with him a couple times and things are going okay, here we'll kind of start this. We said, hey, look at this property, give us a bit on demo. That's all we ask for is demo. Tearing up the floors, which literally I reached down and it, you can pick it up with your hand. This is laminate, it's horribly laid. Um, taking out, I think, let's see where we are. We're going to replace the windows at some point, but it takes a couple months to get those in. So we weren't doing that right away. Um, doo -doo -doo, there, um, demoing the kitchen in this thing here. So nothing too crazy. And the thing is, I've done all this work myself too. I mean, I don't do any of it now, but I remodel the house myself. And I talk about it being like the biggest mistake I ever made, but <laughs> I've demoed kitchens. I've taken out walls. I've done all this myself. So I know the time it takes and how long it takes. So we have that. And then we'll go kind of to the back area here. Um, more of the kitchen. Sorry. Just looking at the crazy flooring. Like that thing is hardly even in there. Oh, oh. So here we go. All right, so we go to this back area and, you know, we talk about maybe taking out this tile, which is a little bit of tile, but not a ton, possibly taking out these walls here because it has tile underneath. Um, and then let's see where we look here. This is where the washer and dryer used to be. We're going to, that's the cubby hole to the living room. Eventually we'll get to where I want to go. <laughs> 
There we go. Here's the bathroom. So we want to demo this bathroom. Not a big bathroom. Nothing too crazy, right? Shower insert. A um, little bit of tile above, but I mean, really, nothing too horrible. And then we're going to move on here. There's a bedroom with some flooring again that needed demoed. And then we'll go kind of upstairs. Do to do, do more of that same flooring up here. Nothing too crazy. Oh, 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 sorry. I want to. There we go. Oh, no. Everything's getting messed up. Okay. <laughs> Here's a bedroom again. Um, want to get to my bathroom if I can? Did I skip the bathroom? Sorry. There we go. Demo this bathroom too. Tear this out. And that's basically it was demoing that. Um, maybe taking out the doors to the flooring, kitchen, bath, getting to a blank slate. And his bid, and this is something that I knew I was in for a, oh, a spider. I didn't see that spider before. Um, I was in for trouble because I'm like, hey, go back, take your time, let us know what your bid is, and we can get back to you. And he's like, oh, I know what my bid is right now. And he didn't write anything down. And he's like, $10,000. It'll take me about a month. I'm like, $10,000 for demo and a month? And this has a great murder room, by the way. But he's not doing anything down here. I was like, so we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> so um, I don't want to get into an argument with him right there. I don't want to, you know. Um, and then he's like, he starts talking to us about, well, I also want to talk to you about working for you as an employee. Because I'm trying to buy a house. And it's really hard for me to qualify. And, you know, he gave us a, a lot of sob stories about his family and different things. I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, I need about ten dollars to $12,000 a month as your employee to, for me to make expenses. I'm like, okay, we'll get back to you on that. And so Nikki and I went back to the office. Um, as soon as she got, we got in the car, she looked at me like, that's crazy. <laughs> so we uh, went back to the office and um, wrote him back a nice email. He's always He emails us a lot, so I emailed him back and said, hey, you know, 10,000 just won't work. Like we have a lot of guys who will do it for much less money. Um, you know, it won't take a month. I've done this work myself, like at the most two weeks. And he says, he's a one man show. That's how long it will take him. And, um, I'm just like, we just can't do that. And so I was kind of expecting him to maybe negotiate with me, maybe, um, you know, say, Hey, I'll work with you. And instead, I don't want to show you his exact response, but I'll kind of give you the gist of it, of what he said. So basically what he said was he can't survive off $400 a day. He can't live off that. And that he, there's no way he can do this in two weeks. He might be able to lower his bid a little bit. And um, so I was wrong when I said he went lower at all. He did say he'd lower it some, but he's quote, not a $37,000 a year low end construction worker. And he goes above and beyond, has his own business, yada, yada, yada. And the, the other house he did for us, we were paying him 10000 a month, basically, because it was a $3,500 demo job he did in a week on a 1,200 square foot house. And he didn't, he took more than a week. And that was a pretty difficult demo job. And it was 2,000 square foot house, where this is 1,600 square feet, so it's actually smaller. But anyway, like I said, paying him too much on that one, now I've got us in trouble on this one. Um, but see, sometimes you make mistakes and they bite you, but you live and you learn. So, um, but his, his bids to replace and redo those things were like less than his demo bid. So it didn't make any sense. Um, so overall, I don't think it was a bad price for the work that was done. So, um, I said, okay, I understand that. Um, we just can't pay that much. We could probably get this demo job done for 2,500, 3,000 with one of our other guys. And he wasn't even doing anything in the garages yet here, anything here. Um, we kind of left those out of it, just work on the house for now. And he still, um, was not happy with that either. So, um, I responded back and said, Hey, maybe this isn't a good fit. I was totally professional. Like, I didn't think there were any hard feelings here. I'm like, we can do this stuff cheaper. Um, you know, if you want to make that kind of money, I'm trying to help him here. Like we know contractors that make that much money. They have big crews and they can get through a demo job like this in a couple of days, a few days, and then they can do a bunch of demo jobs, right. And make that kind of money. I'm like, when we're doing our flips, there has to be a trade-off. Either they have to be done extremely fast and we can pay more money 
or if it takes more time, like a month, to do a demo job, it has to be extremely affordable for us to do that. And I'm just laying off the trade-offs. And he came back and was like, why are you bashing me? It's not my fault the other house took so long. Uh, I can't believe you're comparing me. You know, I'm a one-man crew. I don't have all this resources. I can't do that. I was just like, holy cow, where did this come from? And so, again, I'm just like, hey, I'm sorry, man. This isn't, I don't think this is a good fit. And uh, he responded again and said, I'm sorry. Uh, I can do it for 4000 now, and I can start right away. I'll try and do it in two weeks. If I don't have it done, then, you know, I'll just eat it. And then he said, you know, it's just a mistake. I didn't really mean I wanted $10,000 a month as an employee that's way off base i want way less than that and just totally backtracked and changed this whole story and i'm just like no i'm sorry man um we're we're done now um and again i wasn't mean or angry or anything just you know it wasn't working out for us mutually business wise and then we see this okay so then last night i get an email saying blue steel real estate had a new review and it's not even blue steel real estate who those are flips. That's my real estate brokerage. So it's not really the correct company, but sometimes contractors do this. We had another contract. If you remember, was it Dustin or Dusty who tried to file a lien and left us bad reviews and all this stuff. And I have lots of videos about that. I'll link to those of course below. And eventually he apologized and said he still wanted to work for us in the end. I'm like, no, that's after his lien, you know, didn't work out like he planned. But, um, I, they leave a review on my business page from, I believe this is his wife, but you leave a public review on my page. I was going to let this go. I wasn't really going to talk about it online. I might have mentioned it in passing next time I go to the house. A contractor we we're using didn't quite work out, but I wasn't planning to say anything too crazy. And then they leave a review like this. Contractors be aware, not family oriented, and will leave you and your family hanging high and dry. Really? Because you gave us a bid that was too high and we didn't accept it, we are leaving your family hanging high and dry. I made no promises that we'd give you a full-time job. I made no promises we'd give you full-time work. I said, if you do really good and things go well, we can give you more and more work as the time goes on. It's even outlined in the paper and sheet that we give them in the very beginning. It's outlined in our interviews. And then this happens. And uh, it's not even him that did it. It was, I think it's his wife who left the review, but his name is very, very similar to that. Just remove one A at the start and that's his name. So um, after that was done, I'm like, okay, then this gives me a good opportunity to talk to people, let them know what can happen when you're dealing with houses, how to avoid these situations, how to work forward with it. But the real thing here is we didn't lose a lot from this situation, right? We lost a little bit of time um, driving out there, meeting him, but because we did our due diligence of starting on small jobs, um, not going into big, crazy ones, really, um, being careful. We avoided a massive disaster because I can only imagine what would have happened had we started this rehab. He gives us like a $40,000 bid to rehab the whole house. We're like, Oh, it seems a little high, but when, you know, it's a lot of work here to do. Um, and then halfway through it, nothing's getting done. Everything's overbid, overpriced. You know, he keeps charging us more because we're not, you know, he's not making enough to survive. Um, and then we have a, just a huge disaster on our hands. And by the way, for that bid for that 10,000 demo, that's us providing dumpsters and taking the trash away. That's not even his job. He's just tearing stuff out and throwing it in the dumpster that was already there that we already had provided there for him. So if you're working with, um, contractors, if you're working on new deals on houses, yes, doing this process of starting small, moving your way up starting small jobs, interviewing contractors can take longer, right? It can add weeks to your timeline, maybe even longer, but it's so worth it because if you just jump into it, hire the first person you find, don't check them out. It can get you into a, a situation where you're losing tens of thousands of dollars, if not more from botched work, bad work, time loss, um, angry, angry feelings with each other, lawsuits, all kinds of stuff can come into play if you don't take your time and do it right. So it's, it's frustrating because you want to get going. You know how much it costs you to own these properties every day. You know how you want to get houses finished and on the market, but rushing into things and going crazy with the wrong people will cause you even more problems in the long run. And if you do things right, start slow, get into a good relationship with really good people. Hey, those people can stay with you a long time 
and it makes the process so much easier. We have contractors we've worked with for six, seven, eight years. Um, I mean, one contractor I probably would have been working with for 20 years had he not decided he didn't want to do it anymore because it can be rough on your body, right? It's not something, it's not easy work. They work very hard and um, we pay pretty fair. We know prices are going up for everybody and everything. But, um, you know, if you can't work fast and you charge too much, <laughs> we're just not a real good fit on that. All right, so that's our fun with our latest contractor story. It really didn't hurt us too much, but I mean, it's just frustrating seeing a review. I'll reply to it and kind of really say this whole situation. I might even link to this video in the review as well. So when you do get bad reviews, you can turn it into not a great situation, but a helpful situation. On my Invest for More Facebook page, which has been going bonkers lately because lots of anti-landlord, anti-investor people keep coming on and yelling at me and getting mad at me. And actually that just helps my page reach so much, so many more people. It's fantastic. But um, they'll leave bad reviews on that page sometimes. It has nothing to do with my page or anything. They don't know me. Complete strangers. But I can go in there and reply and be like, hey, sorry about that. Yada, yada, yada. Well, I don't usually say sorry. I say, here's why you're maybe mistaken. And I can link to one of my videos and say, here, here's what we really do. And so I can use that review to actually promote my own stuff better. So I can do that here too. So it's not always the worst thing in the world, but um, it's also not fun either. Okay, that's our latest story. Like I said, love the likes, love the comments, love the shares, love to know what you think about the whole situation. We'll have many more videos coming up soon. We'll have an update on that house when we get um, someone else in there to demo it. Update on some of the other flips we're working on. We need to get those finished up here and on the market here soon. Update on commercial properties we're working on, a new commercial property I'm buying, update on the store, update on the bar, all kinds of cool stuff coming up here. Um, so be sure to check it out. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. Thanks.